Hi everyone, and welcome to part 3 of my CNC router build. Check out part 1 and 2 if you haven't done that already, to see how I built the frame and the gantry. Now it's time to build the x-axis and make everything come together. So, let's get started. The aluminum profiles need a small notch cut out for the pillow blocks to sit in. I marked them 12mm from the side. I tried several ways to cut this, but in the end the multi-tool worked the best. The downside is however that there are a lot of scratch marks coming onto the aluminum. On the x-axis the sensors are installed inside the profiles. The recommended distance for the sensor is 130 mm from the end. The hole is 8 mm in diameter and about 64 mm deep. On the side of the profile two holes are drilled. One for the cable of the sensor and is 6 mm in diameter and the other one is drilled 5 mm and tapped with 6 mm this last one is to lock the sensor in place. I ordered an assortment of stainless steel shim stock. This is needed to adjust the x-axis so that it sits in one plane. I cut the strips wider so that I can drill a hole in them to fit over a bolt. I clamped the shims between two pieces of wood to drill them and I put a screw on the side to prevent them from spinning around while drilling them. The shims go over the bolt on the right angle bracket. This way they don't fall out when loosening the bolts or adjusting the right angle brackets. Mounting the x-axis support rails was one of the most difficult parts. I adjusted them three times in total and it took me over two days. First I set the outer brackets parallel by using the extruded aluminum profiles in the other direction over the frame and mounted the brackets flush to it. Then I adjusted the brackets in the middle to the front and the back brackets by using the aluminum profile in the other direction. After mounting the aluminum profile on the brackets, I installed the inside angle iron for extra rigidity. I shimmed it up according to the profile and the brackets. I used an extruded aluminum profile to check whether the profiles are in the same plane. This was not the case, so I had to adjust everything a second time, often checking with a feeler gauge under the profile.
Then it was finally time to start installing the rails. Unpacking, cleaning and of course installing all the T-nuts. Tightening all the bolts and installing the end plates. I adjusted the rails using a dial gauge and a newly ordered magnet chuck for it. I used the aluminum profiles as a reference. I loosely put the gantry on the carriages and started mounting the ball screws. I still had to install the pillow blocks. There was a little bit of space left between the pillow block and the end of the ball screws. So I made a small spacer from the aluminum pipe that came with the ball screw nut.
sanding it flush on a glass plate. To keep the ball bearing in place we need the spacer ring, the ball bearing and on the other side we need the sir clips that will keep everything together so that the ball bearing doesn't run off. For this eclipse there needs to be a groove right in here and I will be making this with a hacksaw since I don't have a lathe and well this works as well. The sensors for the x-axis need to be mounted before the end plates are fixed permanently, so I wired them through. mounting the ball screw nuts so that I can install the ball screws. I put some aluminum tape on the sides of the ball screw nut to prevent grease from coming out of the sides and just being a little bit too friendly with the grease inside the nut. To install the gantry I had to take it apart. In fact many of the parts I installed I had to take apart again several times to get everything in place in the right order. First I installed the two side plates on the x-axis carriages. Then I placed the y-axis in place and fiddled with it for a while to notice a problem. When I tightened everything up the system wouldn't move anymore.
when I installed a gantry, I noticed this V-shaped holes on on this side and on the other side. So this means that the side support rails for the x-axis are angled outwards. To fix this issue, I had to loosen all these bolts at the, at the bottom here, then push it back so that the gap becomes uh, a bit bigger. And then I can tighten this these bolts, take out the shims first, underneath it, tighten these until the gap disappears. You can see nearly completely disappears. Well, this is what the machine looks like with the mechanics finished. Join me next time to see me wire up everything and test it for the first time. Hit subscribe to be notified when the next video is released and if you have any suggestions or comments feel free to leave them below. And of course, thank you for watching.